All right, welcome back friends. So today I want to show you how to make something seemingly boring look interesting. I'm gonna walk you through the process of this small painting, reveal the incredibly unspectacular secret behind mixing skin tones, but maybe even more importantly, talk about what we can take away from it. I start this painting by painting the darkest parts of the face first. Since the reference photo for this painting doesn't have much contrast and it's also very evenly lit, I don't have any strong shadows in the face, which is actually quite unfortunate. It's much easier to create depth and volume when what you paint has clearly defined shadows. If you paint a face that has little contrast and no shadows, you typically run the risk of creating a flat and boring looking painting. But there are ways of working around this problem, which I will get to in a bit. The face I'm painting also isn't particularly expressive or complex. You could even say it's simple or mundane. And exactly for that reason, it's all the more important to be especially careful and mindful while painting. It's easy to make something look interesting and exciting when the reference you're working from already looks exciting. But making the seemingly boring and mundane look interesting is one of the hardest things when you paint. I'm using a small wood panel that's primed with white gesso for this painting, but to be honest, I should have used canvas as a painting surface. And I would have if I had some. But sometimes you gotta work with what you have. Contrary to popular belief, the painting surface you choose makes a huge difference on how your paintings look. You can prime a canvas and a wood panel with the same gesso, but not only the way you have to paint will be dramatically different. Also the colors you mix look different. Brush strokes are visible to a different degree, color shifts will be different and even transitions will look different. As a general rule of thumb, if you want to create softness, you are better served with a canvas panel. And if you want to create sharpness, a wood panel is probably the better option. For years I worked on oil primed wood panels, which is actually still one of my favorite painting surfaces. But in recent years, I've decided to throw everything that's more toxic than it needs to be out of the studio. So I'm generally using primers and gessos to prime my wood panels these days, which are almost all horrible by the way, but that is a whole different can of worms. So I'm using gesso or a similar primer and for the most part they are good enough to create a decent piece of art. I'm using a mixture of simple flat and small round brushes and the oil paints that I'm using are from Sennelier, Rembrandt and Old Holland. And last but not least, as a painting medium I'm using Liquin. Good old Liquin. I don't think there's anything else that I love and hate just as much as Liquin. It would be the best painting medium ever created. If it wasn't already the shittiest and most frustrating painting medium ever created. The petrol or kerosene smell alone drives me crazy. But the reason I'm using it here is, since I have so many things that I'm working on currently, I'm working against time with this little painting. And since Liquin has one of the quickest drying times, it's my go-to painting medium if I don't have much time to wait for the paint to dry. So I start the painting by painting the darkest parts first, starting with the eyes and the lips. After putting those into place, I go on to paint the shadow side of the hair. And I also fill in the area around her neck. Since we can't see her eyes and we also don't have any dramatic or exciting lighting, it's a bit more difficult to create an exciting image or to create an emotion that the viewer can connect to. So that's also why in the beginning I focus on expression. And I do that by using the expressiveness of the brush strokes to my advantage. I emphasize the little information that I have. The curvature of her lashes or the flow of the hair. I want to make sure that I capture as much expression as I can, which is not only central for the whole feel of the painting, but also what inspired me in the first place. The model's tranquility and calmness are what caught my attention, but with such themes there's always the risk of creating a boring or unexciting painting. It's easy to get the viewer's attention and to keep the viewer's attention when you paint something loud and grotesque. Paint someone with a bleeding nose and you're guaranteed to get some attention. Disfigurement works fine too. Or sex, that's usually the best way to get attention. But the thing is, what many artists starting out these days don't understand is that not all forms of attention are equal. And even more importantly, attention is not the same as appreciation. I see so many artists these days only capitalizing on sex or popularity, on cheap effects without adding anything on their own. And that creates a bubble. 
that's filled with likes and followers and whatnot and that's eventually going to burst. There's nothing easier than painting something that gets attention. I know exactly what to paint if I want to get hundreds of thousands of views and maybe I should do that. But I also don't like selling my soul and I also want to be able to look in the mirror in the next morning. So getting attention is easy, but getting someone to appreciate what you created and appreciate it so much that they want to buy it and hang it on their walls is a whole different story. But I digress. So. After having filled out the rest of the face and the hair, I go back to rework the face. To make up for the lack of contrast and shadows, I have to focus on color, composition and flow. I can't change the fact that it's a fairly boring lighting situation that doesn't make for a painting with much depth. So it's also no option for me to aim for the most degree of realism with this particular piece. But what I can do is I can try to capture the softness of the skin and the flow of the hair and the overall shape of the figure in a way that complements the theme of tranquility. And that's what I put my focus on for the rest of the painting process. I repaint parts of the face, making sure to capture the softness of the skin. And I don't mean how soft the transitions between the colors look, but softness in the sense of the look and feel of the skin. I also make sure to capture the subtle temperature shifts of the skin, meaning how warm or cool the colors look. People ask me all the time how I make skin tones and the answer to that is I don't. Well, there are no skin tones. There is no such thing as a skin tone. Skin can have all the colors you can imagine, depending on the lighting situation surrounding it. In broad daylight, skin is usually a mixture of different neutral grays and that's it. No secret or special sauce, just gray color. And it doesn't even matter how you mix those colors. You can mix gray a million different ways. People get so caught up in the idea that if only they knew the secret behind how something is done, they could finally do it themselves. But they totally miss the fact that there's actually no secret to begin with. The only thing that matters is that you capture the value of the color, meaning how light or how dark it is. And in the case of skin tones, the contrast between cool and warm colors, ideally. And you don't even have to do that. That's just a bonus, so that the skin you paint doesn't look just one-dimensional and boring. So normally at this stage, before doing anything else, I would work on the face until it's almost finished. But not with this painting. Instead I go on to paint the background and I start to introduce some abstractions and texture to the painting. Since the face isn't particularly detailed and the composition is so simple, I have to create complexity differently. And the way I do that is by going back and forth between destroying parts of the painting and then repainting them. And in this painting, I go through this cycle several times. There is complexity that comes from detail and composition. But there's also complexity that comes from layers and layers of paint creating abstract shapes and textures, like layers of sediment. Both are visually interesting in their own way, but at the end of the day, they are tools in creating art and manipulating the perception of the viewer. And as tools, they should be used and manipulated according to the needs of the painting. I also don't paint everything to an equal finish here, because there's really no point to it. The painting doesn't become more complex or interesting if I paint the hair more realistically. To the contrary. So since I don't want the less important parts of the face to compete for the viewer's attention, I only paint what's most expressive and important. And I contrast those areas with the abstractions and the less important parts of the face. This is also something that goes back to the idea of contrasting. Tension and harmony in this case. And all that in order to create something that's more than the sum of its parts and ultimately an interesting visual experience. And after going back and forth between the background and the figure, all that's left for me to do is to make some corrections here and there until I feel that I've found the right balance between all the components. Every day I read comments and messages that say how one isn't supposed to do this or that. You're not supposed to paint a certain way, you're not supposed to use certain materials, or you can't use certain techniques because they're considered cheating. And sometimes I'm left wondering if people are still talking about art. Because as far as I know, there are no rules in creating art. And therefore, there's of course also no cheating in creating art. 
I mean, the term cheating doesn't even make sense in the context of art. And it honestly has got to be one of the most stupid things I constantly come across when people talk about art. People sometimes talk about art as if they're talking about the first law of thermodynamics or sports. You can't do that. Nope, that's impossible. Guys, we're not talking about sports or the laws of physics here. There are no rules broken if you don't finish an area of a painting. And there's also nothing keeping you from using a projector to transfer your drawing. Don't let people who have no idea what they are talking about get to you and tell you what you should and shouldn't do or what you can or can't do. At the end of the day, you can do anything you want. It's actually pretty simple. Making a painting is exactly like making a sandwich. You make it your own way, to your own taste, according to your own preferences. And who cares about anything else? If you want to use a donut as the bread, go ahead, you have my blessing. I mean, what would you say if someone came to you and told you that you're not supposed to use pickles on your sandwich? Or that using starboard mayonnaise is cheating? Well, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. But with that being said guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end here. Thank you all so much for watching, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and yeah, have a good one.